Okay, I'm Angel. <laughs> I'm an intern here and youth leader at OCC. And I have a privilege of speaking with you guys today. And this is our first service that we started of the new theme of the month, which is titled, I Am That I Am. And this is a reference to Exodus 3, actually when Moses asked God, he was like, when the Israelites ask who sent me, God's like, I am that I am, right? Like who, like who are you, right? Who is God? And that's really what this theme is about, is God, right? Because that's what we're all here for. Ooh, so as they're passing around notebooks and everything, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start asking you all some questions, right? I mean, basic ones. Everybody knows who God is, right? Yes. 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 If you don't, please let us know. Is your history yep. Yep. Please take the notes. <laughs> please take your notes. Okay. Okay, so everybody knows who God is, right? What is a characteristic of God? Yes. Yes. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Unconditional. Yep. Omnipresent. Faithful. I heard that. It's okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. God's all those things, right? One of the characteristics about God that I'm going to speak about today or tonight is how he is merciful and graceful, right? And that's the title of my message. So for taking notes, which everybody has notebooks, it's he is that graceful and merciful God. Do I need to repeat it? Okay. He is that graceful and merciful God. God is the title of this message. God. Yep. Okay. So, do you guys, okay, first we're going to start off with mercy. Do you guys know what mercy is? Yes? No? Yes. Does anybody want to say what mercy is? Like, this definition in your own words. What is mercy? Yes. It's okay. <laughs> Don't be nervous. What is mercy? You want to call a friend? I mean, Jeffrey's raising her hand. Jeffrey's raising her hand. Okay. Wait. Yes. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Freedom. Okay. Yes. I'm going to get Jeffrey. She's going to get it. I'm, I, yes. Bingo. Yes, anyone want to add? You had your hand up. Yes. Good job. Good job. Okay. Good job. Okay. <laughs> okay, I have mercy, compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm them. I'm going to say it one more time. Price said that pretty fast. Compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is one's power to punish or harm them. Okay, I have one more question. Then I know. What is grace to you guys? What is, yes. Yes, Jeffrey. Good job. Yes. Yes. 
Bingo. <laughs> That's good. Both you guys there are so good. Yes. So grace. I would say like supernatural approval, acceptance, blessings, unmerited favor, right? Something we don't deserve, but we get, right? God fills in every way we lack grace. So I'm going to be talking, I'm going to read through the story of Jonah, but like I'm going to skip the parts about Jonah. Like, so we're going to talk about the, like the sailors and we're going to talk about the, the Ninevites, but like we know the story of Jonah, but we're going to see how God's grace and mercy shows up within this book. So starting, okay, I'm just summary, you know, God calls Jonah to go to Nineveh because the Ninevites were very wicked, very corrupt, violent people. So Jonah does not do that, but we know that he goes the opposite direction. But I'm going to start in verse 4 of Jonah chapter 1, which says, but the Lord, the Lord, the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at a time like this, he shouted. Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he'll pay attention to us and spare our lives. So during this time, this, there's a storm happening. And the sailors were freaking out, calling to their gods at the time, which whatever they believed in. And I thought that was interesting. Because sometimes like in times of like desperation, we just do the first thing that's comfortable. Like it could be, like for me, it was like just getting on social media. Like I'm stressed right? Or from, like, at one point, it was, like, video games. Another point, it was just, like, oh, I'm going to rely on somebody else. But the sailors really just caught on to their gods. And when doing that, they threw over their cargo, right? And sometimes when we go to other, like, things that are not of God, we kind of, like, sacrifice things that does not need to be sacrificed, right? So, like, they didn't need to throw over that cargo because as we know that once they threw over Jonah, the, sea, the storm ceased, right? So it wasn't that the, car, like the, ship was, the ship was too heavy, but they just needed to reach out to God. And then it has me thinking, like, what are some of the things that you guys might run to instead of God? Like, we all, it's something that's very human nature of us. And... What are some of those things? And it can be past or present, right? Yes. Friends, Friends right? Sometimes they can be in that way. Anybody else? If not, that's fine, too. Oof. Well, good thing I don't need that first page. But I'm going to go to verse 10. No. Oh, wait, my bad. Verse 13. Instead, the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to the land, but the stormy sea was too violent for them, and they couldn't make it. They cried out to the Lord Jonah's God. Oh, Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin, and don't hold us responsible for his death. Oh, Lord, have you sent the storm upon him for your own good reasons? Then the sailors picked Jonah up, threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. So, yes. So, the sailors also went to another god. But then, when they noticed that even when they tried to do a third way, it didn't work, they caught on to Jonah's god. And Jonah's god is our god. He's the god that created the land and the sea and the alpha, the omega. And when they caught on to God, they were like, we know that you threw, we have to do this for your own good reason. And it was a good reason. It was for Jonah to go back to his purpose, which is to save, like help save the Ninevites. So even though sometimes you might be in a season of trials or in the storm, it's for a good reason, right? It brings you back to your purpose at the end of the day. But even through Jonah's life, the the sailors ended up following him. So, like, 
through Jonah's disobedience, because he wasn't supposed to be on that ship, God still used it for good. So the sailors saw the mighty and powerful God through Jonah's life, and they decided to devote their lives and make sacrifices to God because of that. But then it goes on to say, too, that, like, the sailors were not perfect. They are going to make mistakes. We are going to make mistakes. Like, we're not going to live a life where we are going to get it right every single time. But even then, God still showed up for them. So it's like, that's where God's grace comes into play. Because we're not going to get it right. We are going to mess up, but... God still showed up for the sailors. He still showed up in a way like never before that they haven't seen before. Okay. So, with... Okay, so we know chapter 2 of Jonah is Jonah in the whale which I'm not going to read it, but it's like Jonah decides to finally come and come to repentance and like God use me. So within that, we're going to start at Jonah 3, verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat on a heap of the ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks, may eat or drink anything at all. People and God alike must wear garments of mourning, and everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. Even, no, when God saw that they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. This is actually important to know. It's a lot I just read. But the Ninevites were actually very violent and crazy. Like, they were murderers. They were, they were the type to skin people alive. They were corrupt. They were doing witchcraft. Like, they were well, you might think the worst of the worst. But, and they were this great, huge city. So you have to think about, at, back then, before, jo- before God called Jonah to go to Nineveh, where Jonah is from was Israel. And Israel and the Nineveh, or like the Assyrian Empire, I don't even know how to pronounce that, they were like arch nemesis. So imagine like your school, you know, you have like that rival team. It's kind of like that. Right? So at this time, like, God gave mercy on what you would call the most wicked city at the time. And so it's like his mercy came through because honestly, I personally think they might have deserved destruction, but I'm not God. Right? And so that goes to show that, like, we're not going to compare, but we're going to compare that, like, whatever you're doing, I'm pretty sure it's not as worse as that. And so you have to think about, like, God's mercies are new every day, right? So it's like, honestly, all it just takes is just, God, forgive me. I repent. Even if you don't think it's that big of a deal or that major sin, we're always going to fall short. God, forgive me. I did not, I fell short again and again and again, and that's what, that's what I'm going to do, right? And so that goes on to say that, like, while we have grace, right, through our salvation and as we walk through the day, we also have mercy because we also deserve a lot, but we also have a lot of compassion and forgiveness from the Lord we also get. Jonah 4, 1. This change of plans greatly upset Jonah, and he became very angry, so he complained to the Lord about it. 
Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ran away to tarnish. I knew that you were merciful and compassionate, God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. So even though Jonah was, you know, kind of hating at the moment and really angry, but it, Jonah knew the character of God. Jonah knew that God was forgiving, that he was compassionate, slow to anger, that he has unfailing love towards his people, to his people. So it's like the same God that, was, that Jonah knew is the same God that we know today. Like he's not anything, he's not anywhere different, right? So it's like we have to think about like our God is so forgiving. He's so merciful. He's so graceful. And it really just over, it shows his love though. Because if it, like I said, if it weren't me, those Ninevites would have been gone yesterday. But it shows his love. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But it's like, it really does show his love. It shows it all together. Because, like I said, he didn't have to be merciful. He didn't have to be graceful. But, like I said, he died on a cross for us, even though we are sinners. That's nothing but love, right? And so... As we like think through our day to day, and as we might think we're not even worthy, which we're not, but he still loves us, and he still provides for us, he's still faithful for us, and he still does a lot for us, like provide grace and mercy for us.